Hello and welcome to episode 70 of Let's Run Facebook Ads, the podcast with myself, Nick Bonington. Today, we are going to start off the new podcast. And what I mean is things have changed in this digital world. I'm sure you're all pulling your hair out. We're trying to figure out how to make it all work and how to read your data and how to basically measure your metrics. So this is what we're all going to start talking about, how we fix this, because that's what we're here for. Okay, let's jump into it. Hello, welcome to the podcast. I um, hope everyone is well. Even though our world has been turned upside down in digital marketing, which I know that I, I am sure because you guys can't be any different to the clients of mine and the people I'm speaking to all the time, um, that we are pulling our hair out, just trying to figure out how we make all this work again. Now, this is what we're going to talk about over the next few, well, the whole podcast essentially is going to be looking at new ways to test, even though they're not massively new ways to test, um, different lookalike audiences, whether you go out to an audience as a whole. Um, but the simple truth is that when we're running an ad, the data to do with things like click-through rates, cost per click, um, the quality of the ads, and things like that, CPMs are all fine, okay? I still go by that data. I still trust that data. But anything post-click is just off. It's really off. We had um, one of our clients the other day, which is a, a charity, we're doing a bit of a test. And they, for the first time in about a year, they confirmed that the amount of donations they had was the same as Facebook said it had. That was That's literally the only one that I've come across. Apart from that, everyone else is just literally pulling their hair out, having an absolute nightmare with it. So I want to start by slowly making you all realize and understand that this isn't the end of the world. We can still do what we need to do on digital, but we just have to look at things in a different kind of way, a different perspective, slightly outside the box. Okay. There is something called MER, and that stands for Marketing efficiency ratio. So what we're all been trying to do up to this, well, what we've all been doing up to this stage is we choose a channel, if that's Facebook, if it's LinkedIn, if it's TikTok, if it's Instagram, and we, let's say we're sending them to a landing page or we're sending them to an e-commerce shop. We're sending them through that funnel and then they come into the side. And we know that Facebook has brought in X amount of orders. We know that LinkedIn has brought in X amount of leads. Whatever it might be, those based on what it used to be, which was a 30-day um, attribution window, now a seven-day, we were trusting that data. The data was pretty much spot on, and we could go about our advertising lives and just do the stuff we needed to do. Now what we're finding is that Facebook is under and overestimating our results. So, for instance, we've got a holiday company we deal with, they give us some decent spend, but not huge amounts at the moment. And we are, as far as Facebook's concerned, they've had like 370 um, purchases of these holiday packages. And the holiday packages are worth about, let's say, I think they're £150 per person for like a two or three day holiday package around the UK. Okay. They've generated in the like last three weeks about £90,000 worth of revenue from Facebook. Now, I've been banging on about UTMs and things like that. So we set up UTMs on these ads. So rather than just relying on what Facebook's telling us, we're basically putting a UTM in there. So in Google Analytics, we're able to see what that UTM is and fire it back to Facebook. So we can say, okay, that UTM came from Facebook. It came from that audience and it came from that ad creative. Now, if we, we've spent like 1800 quid on this test so far, if we look at what the UTMs are saying in Google, based on the Facebook ads, we've done like 1,400 pounds in sales. Facebook's telling us we've done 90,000. Massive difference there. So how have we got around that with, with the client? How do we do this with the client? Well, the client, your client, you as a business owner, need to be really open-minded and put in simple terms, and I am trying to keep this going forward with our own business as simple as possible. How much are you spending on your advertising. Now, that could be um, your, let's, well, we, this is digital channels. Let's stick to digital. You could be doing that on Facebook. 
on Instagram, same thing, but you might be using both. Um, you might be doing a bit of TikTok, let's say if you're e-commerce or something, you might be doing a bit of LinkedIn. Either way, what is going out on your channels and how much revenue you are taking? Now, if you're brand new, this could be easier because it's like, okay, we're not doing anything else apart from this channel. So no one can find our website unless we are advertising on one of these channels. In that case, if that's the only reason you, thing you're doing and you are then getting, let's say you spent a thousand and you're taking 5,000 pounds in revenue for that month, then it's quite easy to measure that and say, this is working because you now know that if you switched off those marketing channels, that revenue is going to disappear. Okay. For a larger company, you kind of, we kind of work on different metrics to do with the conversion rates. So for instance, this holiday company, when we, when we sitting down in the meeting with them, we're going over all the different types of conversion. Now I don't expect you to do all this sort of stuff for your company because you're, you're going to be learning how this sort of works and things like that. And that's what we're going to be talking about on these podcasts. But essentially um, we've said to the client, okay, with the traffic that comes to your website, what is your average conversion rate? Okay, now bear in mind, they've done Google, they're doing a bit of Facebook anyway, we're just, we're coming in and taking that over. Um, they're doing Instagram, I think they're doing about to do a bit of TikTok. So either way, they understand their business enough to know what's coming in and what their conversion rate is. And they said their conversion rate was about 8% of all traffic coming into the business. So then we're able to look at what traffic we're bringing to, and I'm saying traffic, but remember, we always optimize for conversions or with the new ODAC system sales, but we're trying to generate people to come to the website and purchase. Working for 8%, we are actually in a really, really good place. So the client, through that education process of how the difficulties we're having with tracking and how we need to educate, they're happy with that because they're saying, yeah, it makes absolute sense. We can see the Facebook saying 90,000. We can see the UTMs are saying this, but we know the UTMs are wrong and we know Facebook's wrong, but we know based on our average stats of being a business for the last 15 years, the traffic coming in from all channels that we're now looking at, helping look after is 8%, in which case we are generating X of revenue. Because then what you can look at then is, is about growth. So if you, if you know that you've been doing X amount of channels and let's say you'll spend, I'm just pulling figures out of the head. Let's say your spend is 5,000 pounds a month in advertising. And it's been like that for 10 years. Okay. You've brought an agency in like us or your, or whatever your own situation is. And you now say, okay, we're now going to go up 11,000, 12,000, 13,000, 14,000. And over a year, you're going to 10 X, uh, sorry, you're going to go up by 10,000 on your budget. So you, by the end of the year, you're going to be spending 20,000, pounds a month opposed to 10,000 or 5,000 that you're starting off with. Sorry, if you're following track of my figures, I think I've just messed up there. But you can see where I'm going. So as, are they then seeing growth in the business? Because that's what we're all about. It's what all our clients want. We need growth. So if you're upping your budget slightly, is the revenue of the company going up slightly? So that's what how you kind of need to look at this. The other thing is, is which is where I've got my beer in my bonnet as well. Now, I've not really talked about this, and I'm going to hold my hands up. Facebook has made this very easy for us to make money and track our metrics pretty accurately up till now. So what I mean by that is that we've forgotten the traditional 101 of marketing. 101 of marketing is build awareness. So someone there is someone, people out there who don't know about your brand or service. So you make them aware of it. Okay, that is what we call our top of funnel. Middle of funnel during this exercise will be we're nurturing these people. We've get, if we've gained an email address, we'll put them on an email sequence. If we haven't given their email address, we'll, we'll show more ads of them at middle of funnel, which is my Omni 8 strategy, which is showing eight ads using a reach campaign to people in the audience of website clickers. We're, we're, we're now nurturing these people because what we can't do is expect that someone's going to come in and click our ad to go, oh, yeah, company ABC limited. Brilliant see another ad, oh, there's another ad from company ABC Limited, and the bottom of the funnel is like, hey, buy from us today. I'll do that. It's never going to happen. But why we've never really had to rely on, uh, why we've been able to just get away with that is because Facebook has managed to get so many leads or purchases at top of the funnel, or with one retargeting ad, it's been brilliant. Facebook knows how to serve people at exactly the right time to get a purchase or a lead out of them. 
that intelligence is really starting to go. And in, two, in next year, if you don't know about this already, guys, Google's getting rid of cookies. So it's a whole nother world. So we really, why you guys are listening to this podcast is I want you to really start changing the way you think about how this is done now so that you can keep on this train positively as we go through this digital change. So if we look at, so let's go back to the, let's go to um, sales cycles. Okay. Sales cycles is what I mean by that is for the average price of an order, how long does it take a consumer to make a decision on whether they're going to buy that product? On 50 pounds, it takes three weeks on average. 100 pounds takes five weeks and 200 pounds takes seven to eight weeks. Thereafter, it can be up to three months to make a decision on a 50 pound item can take three weeks. So in when I start looking at this and really starting to get my head around it on how we're going to measure these things, even a 30 day attribution window with Facebook, a lot of the orders would be coming out of that, which wouldn't be recorded because it can take, let's say it's four, let's say it's four weeks. Let's say that product is 50 to 100 pounds. It's going to take four weeks for make, that person to make a decision. That's based on you doing good marketing and actually nurturing these people and making them come back to your website and purchase something or fill in a lead form. With that in mind, we said to our travel company as part of the whole explanation of how we need to look at these things. If you're following a UTM and that person comes through from an ad, goes onto your website, has a look at the holiday package you're advertising for. For instance, this one's a Harry Potter world tour, you know, with a coach taking you there. They go on that, it's £150 a person. If Mrs. Bloggs is looking at it, she's going to go and want to discuss it with her husband. If Mr. Bloggs is looking at it, he's going to go and want to discuss it with his wife. We said to them, how many touch points or how many of, on average does it take for someone to come back and purchase? Three to five times. So with that in mind, our UTM that is, was supposed to save the day, being on that ad, when they click through and that UTM and then they go away and speak to the husband three times, and then one evening they go, oh, I'll have a look at that. And they Google that travel company. Then they type into the search um, Harry Potter or deals or whatever and comes up with Harry Potter and they click it. They And then they purchase and it costs and it costs 600 quid. No one knows where that person came from apart from Google saying that this person came directly from Google, in which case they think, oh, God, our organic stuff's doing really well. They saw it three weeks ago on Facebook, Okay. So you can start seeing, now this was happening beforehand. This isn't new. This has always been happening. But because we were getting our purchases of top of funnel and our leads of top of funnel or middle of funnel and those strategies that we were using were working and Facebook, Facebook's data was able to tell us this was happening, we didn't need to look into any further because make hay while the sun shines. While these systems are telling us that we're making money and we can see our revenue coming through, why do we need to do loads more ads? Why do we need to nurture people? Why do we need to do all this if we, if we don't need to? Guys, now we need to because we've got to go back to old-fashioned traditional marketing using digital channels to get these people nurtured to come through. So we have to, we can only look at the revenue taken by a company. We can only look at the ad spend spent on a platform and we can only look at the growth and do we think that it's making money? That's the start of the end of this podcast. I'm going to leave it there. And on the next couple of podcasts, we're going to look at different things like, can we still trust the click-through rates? And how do we know a channel's working for us, et cetera, et cetera. I hope you can take something from that. It was more of a, no, it wasn't a how to do something. It's more of, I just want to get you thinking in the right way so that you can start looking at your ads in a certain way. You can start looking at the revenue of your business in a certain way, and you can start working out whether something's working for you or not. I hope that helps, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.